popsicles for fun. I'm here in my studio. I have my sets all set up. And today I thought I would do another behind the scenes video slash tutorial. Um, I kind of want to do a more of a tutorial this time on how I actually do stop motion. A lot of you guys ask what stop motion is and how I do it. So I thought I would, you know, slow down the process just a little bit. This isn't going to be a super in-depth tutorial, but um, I do want to show you a little bit of how I do it. The video that I'm making today um, is already posted to my channel by now. So I'll go ahead and link it in the description so you can watch that um, because this will you know, show it, be showing me animate it. And so if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go watch it first. So stop motion is all about taking pictures. Um, I actually taught myself how to do stop motion when I was about 10 or 11 years old, right at the beginning of my channel. Um, so, you know, I'm completely self-taught. I didn't take any fancy classes. You don't have to know what you're doing to try stop motion. I didn't. Um, I basically, Kind of figured it out um i loved to watch youtube videos as a kid that's what made me start my own channel and um you know i would see these videos of people doing stop motion it was so cool to me how people could make their dolls move without any um, hands or anything just by taking pictures and so I figured I could try that out um, and so I did. Um, my first stop motions were obviously very terrible. You can watch my very first stop motion on my channel. Um, it's still up there. So I taught myself stop motion and really the basics are quite simple. All you have to do is you set up your dolls, you take a picture and then you move the doll a tiny bit, take another picture, do that thousands of times and then you put them all together in a photo editor like I use iMovie and then it looks like the dolls are moving when you speed up the pictures really fast. So as you can tell, it's definitely a very long process. I've sped up the footage here so you can see a time lapse of the whole thing. Uh, this scene took me about 18 minutes to film in total. A lot of people think the hardest part about stop motion is how long it takes to do and the patience you have to have to do it, but personally I'm so used to making stop motions that it doesn't even feel like that long of a time to me anymore. I've been doing this for so long, I'm just really used to it. Seeing it like this makes it look a little intimidating, but if you really want to try out the process, I encourage you to go and just try and make a little stop motion. It doesn't have to be a long video, it doesn't have to be good, but it's really not as hard as it looks and it can be really fun, which is why I still do it and I still love doing it. Now here's the scene you just saw me filming. This is unedited without any voiceovers, of course, but this is what the raw footage looks like when it's sped up. This scene alone has 195 pictures, and each picture is 0.1 seconds long. Basically, this means my videos have a frame rate of 10 pictures per second, meaning each second of footage has 10 pictures. This is why making a long stop motion takes a lot of work. Generally, in a stop motion, the higher the frame rate, the you know more smooth the stop motion and the more realistic it might look. Um, the frame rate I use is 10 frames per second, which means that every second of footage you see, there are 10 pictures in that. So it adds up. Um, most of my videos have between three and 4,000 pictures. So it's a lot. Um, when I started, I think my frame rate was like two frames per second. I had each picture was 0.5 seconds long. So there was two pictures per second and it was really choppy. If you're editing an iMovie like I am, uh, 10 frames per second is the fastest you're going to be able to go because iMovie doesn't let you make pictures um, shorter than 0.1 seconds. So yeah, you can only do 10 frames per second, but that's what I use and it works pretty well for me. Personally, I love stop motion because I can tell stories just by taking pictures and seeing my scenes come to life is super cool. I really love how realistic the doll's movements look when they're animated. Okay, so before I move on, I wanted to show you guys the time-lapsed footage for a few other scenes just to show you guys a closer look into how I make my stop motions.
I also wanted to quickly point out all of the scenes in this video that had fake little bugs in the background because those scenes took a really long time to film. For each picture, I had to move the doll and every single bug in the background. This is the scene you just saw me film. It only has 62 pictures, but it took me 30 minutes to film because of the detail in each picture. This second scene with Deuce and the Bugs also took forever to film. This is the process in real time, and as you can see, it's super slow because I have to move each individual bug by hand. Because stop motion is all about tiny movements and thousands of pictures, scenes like this are incredibly tedious to film. But to me, these kinds of stop motions are also the most rewarding to watch when you're done. I love how this scene turned out, and I'm really proud of it. Don't me, told them follow me, they see the vision Now it's 2020, clear as tile, lakes is clear as day No longer move around in fear, disarray Pray you hear me like the winter wind against your window pane Feel the bass, baby, soak it in and let it marinate It's time to hustle, gotta muscle up and run through bear and now here's the rest of the process sped up as a time lapse. As you can see, it's still easy to tell how long the scene took to film even when it's sped up. And here's a different angle in real time. And in time lapse. Here's the finished scene. It only has 40 pictures. So after I take all of the pictures for the video, it's time for me to edit the video. And like I said, I do this in iMovie and I record voices through my microphone. My microphone right here is a blue Yeti microphone. Um, I find this works pretty good. It's really easy to use. Anyway, a little bit more about how long my video took me to do. Um, I spent three days taking the pictures for this video. I was at my studio for about four to five, six hours every day. Um, so in total, that's about 12 to 15 hours, give or take, just to take pictures. So, um, you know, for those of you who ask me how long it takes to make a video that you know, it took me 12 to 15 hours to take pictures for this video. Um, some don't take me quite that long, some take me longer. This one has about 3,700 pictures, I think, so it's a lot. Normally I can finish a video in two days because I make all my videos on the weekends um, since I am a student. I'm a senior in high school, by the way, so um, yeah, it's, it's a big time commitment. And now um, I'm at the editing process, which can take several hours as well. I don't have an exact um, amount of time to tell you guys the editing takes, but um, to give you an example, I load all of my photos in the iMovie, which is a very slow process, by the way, because while iMovie works for stop motion, it is not made for stop motion. It's not made to handle 3,000 pictures, but um, I do it anyway, so I'm kind of pushing the limits. It's really slow, but um, <clears throat> it works for me. It's really easy for me to edit that way, so that's what I do when I make it work. I also record a few hundred voiceovers, I'd say. I'm about halfway through editing this video right now, and um, I just recorded my 132nd voice. Um, so just to show you guys how many voices I actually do, um, it's hundreds, so yeah. But um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look into how I record my voices. I'm gonna show you um, my screen so you can see what I'm working with and I'll explain a little bit more. So I'm in iMovie right now and this is what all of my pictures look like. This is the interface that I work with. Um, 
yeah, as you can see right here is where all my pictures go and I can just drag them in from my media library. One problem that I really have with working in iMovie is that I can't play back my pictures. And what I mean by that is because iMovie is not made to handle so many pictures, um, it lags a lot. So I can't, if I press play here, just watch and see what happens. So as you can see, it starts to lag. Um, that actually did a lot better than it normally does. It let me play like the first five, 10 seconds of that. Normally I can't even watch um, two seconds of footage because it lags so hard. Um, that was a little bit better, but as you can see, I can't really watch the entire thing through. So it's really hard for me to watch my progress and um, watch the whole video and see how smooth my stop motion looks when I'm actually in iMovie. I can't really do that. So I don't really get to watch my whole video back until it's completed and I can export it to my computer and watch before I post it. Let's say I wanna record a voice. A lot of people ask me how I actually um, do voiceovers in iMovie and that they don't know how. Um, so it's actually pretty easy. All you do is you press the V key on your keyboard. When you first go into iMovie, um, your, your screen right here will look like this. But if you press the V key, as you can see, this red button pops up and then this button is settings. So press the settings button. If you're using an external microphone, you can select it here. Um, as you can see, I'm using my Yeti stereo microphone like I showed you guys, and it's a USB mic. So I plug it into my USB port in my computer and it will pop up here. Um, but if you don't have a microphone, you can use the system setting, the built-in microphone, if your computer has a built-in microphone. If your computer does not have a built-in microphone, you probably won't be able to do a voiceover. I'm not really sure how that works because I always use my Yeti. Select whatever microphone you're going to use. You can uh, change some stuff here. I just leave it how it is. And then all you're going to have to do is press this red button to start recording. Um, and if you press it, it will count down from three and then you can record your voice. And I just talk right into my microphone and it will show up right here as a voiceover. As you can see, this is VO133. So this is the 133rd voiceover in this project. And this does include deleted voiceovers. So if I delete it, the next voiceover I, I do is gonna be voiceover 134. So just to give you a little overview of the process. I think a lot of stop motion animators actually record their voices before they even take the pictures. I don't do that because I don't write scripts. Um, really, this is all improv. If I have a, a, a long line that I need to say, I will write it down in my notes and then I will read it into the microphone, but I don't have a script. Um, I never, I actually did try scripts a few years ago and I really didn't like it. So I just improv and that works best for me and I really enjoy it. So that's what we do. But the one problem with that is if I have a really long line and I don't have enough stills to match the length of the voice, it's going to be a problem. And now, listen, I don't have a good way to explain this because it's a little bit confusing. Um, I know that probably confused you guys. Let me go back and show you an example. All right, so this line with Abby here. So as you can see, voiceover 121 is a voice I recorded for Abby. It is 7.2 seconds long, but I only have um, these pictures of Abby talking here. <clears throat> I don't know how many pictures this is, but it's not seven seconds worth of footage, um, if that makes sense. So what I have to do, and I do this for almost every single voice because it's, it's just easier. Um, as you can see, my um, pictures, I have them all set to 0.1 seconds because as I said, I have a frame rate of 10 frames per second at, in my videos, but I'll make certain frames one second long. So as you can see, this frame doesn't move and she just has her hand up like this for one second and then she'll move again and now her hand is on her mouth and now i made this frame one second long so she's frozen here for another second i don't know a better way to explain it but as you can see i don't have an i don't have seven seconds of her talking but i have a seven second voice so what i have to do is i have to slow down some of these frames so the amount of voice i have can match her movement just thought I would show you guys that because it is hard to explain, but it is a big part of how I edit my videos and how I make these voices fit onto the frames that I've taken. Now that you guys have kind of an idea of what I'm working with, I'm gonna go ahead and record some voices and uh, you guys can see how I do it.
This next voice is from Abby, and it is at the scene where they just found out that the neighbors are complaining about Holt um, right after he moved in, so Abby's about to go over to his apartment, and right now she's explaining to Cerise what's going on. So, that's the voice I'm doing now. Apparently, it was a bad idea to Holt. Okay, I already messed up, uh, so we're going to do that again. <laughs> Apparently, it was a bad idea to trust Holt after all, because the neighbors have already complained. I forgot what I was going to say. That's not right. Let's do it again. Apparently, trusting Holt was a bad idea after all, because the neighbors are already threatening to call the cops on him. There we go. Aside from recording voiceovers, editing includes, um, you know, just adding music, sound effects, and like title screens like this. Right here, I'm making this music fade out so it doesn't just cut off. And then we're going to fade into the next music and the next scene. There we go. This next voice is from Holt. So let's do that. All right, everybody, who is having a good time up in here? His voices sound really stupid to record, but. <laughs> and then what we do here is this um, will adjust the volume of the other sounds. Bear with me. Um, <laughs> so basically that's going to turn this um, background song down while he's talking so you can actually hear what he's saying. And then we also, because this is a guy, we're going to give him an audio effect and pitch his voice down by one. And that's going to make him not sound like me. So let's listen to that, see if it's good. And as you can see, it lags. That's what I was talking about. All right, and this next voice is from Holt again. That's what I like to hear. Let's keep it going, brothers. So I'm going to go ahead and end the editing here, just because if I did every single voiceover on camera, this video would be hours long. I hope that watching me edit my videos helped you understand the process a little bit better. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. I know this wasn't a super in-depth tutorial, like I said, but I do hope, you know, this kind of showed you the basics of stop motion. It's not as hard as it may seem. Um, really, you don't need any fancy equipment or fancy editing software to make a stop motion. I encourage all of you guys who might want to try it to try it out because I, you know, tried it out. I taught myself and, you know, I've improved and seven, eight years later, I'm here making these videos. So, yeah, if you want to try it out, I encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. Um, you guys can ask me questions in the comments if there's more things you want to know, and I'll try to answer them. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.